you should now have your circle of fifths ready to use. If you haven't got a circle of fifths just at this stage, please stop this video and have a look at my other video entitled Creating the Circle of Fifths. Okay, so this video is concentrating on just the major keys. Now, C is at the very top of our clock at 12 o'clock because it's got no sharps or flats in its key signature. If we look at the right of the clock, the G, the D, the A, the E, the B, and so on, if we look around that way, we're going to be adding sharps to our key signature. I'll explain more about this in a moment. But if we go to the left of our clock, the F, the B flat, the E flat, and so on, we're adding flats to our key signature. As I say, I'll talk about this in more detail in a moment. Let's assume we want to find out how many sharps or flats are in the key signature of G major. And I've highlighted the G on the screen there. Now we can see that it's one notch away from the C and it's on the sharp side of the clock. In other words, because it's one notch away from the C and it's on the sharp side, it means that there is one sharp in the key signature of a G major. The same idea works for the rest of the clock. So if I wanted to find out how many sharps or flats are in D major, I find out where D is on the clock and I can see that G is one notch, D is two notches on the sharp side, so D major has two sharps in its key signature. Let's try one more example before we move on and we'll have a look at A flat major. Now this time we're going to have a look around the A flat side of the clock and I've highlighted it there for you and we just count around. F is one notch, B flat is two notches, E flat is three notches, A flat is four notches away from the C on the flat side of the clock. So in other words A flat has four flats in its key signature. We now know how to use a circle of fifths to work out how many sharps or flats are in a key signature. We know, for example, that G major has got one sharp in the key signature. What we don't know, however, is which note has been sharpened. Is it a G? Is it an E? Is it an F? Now, in the top left-hand corner of the screen, we've still got our handy little phrase, the Father Christmas gave Dad an electric blanket. And I've also got beneath it the same phrase in reverse order. B, E, A, D, G, C and F. We're going to use those two phrases to help us work out which notes have been made sharp or flattened. All you need to remember is that the top row tells us the order of the sharps, whereas the B, E, A, D and so on, the bottom row tells us the order of the flats. Let's do an example together. We already know that in G major there is just one sharp. To work out which note that is, we look at our order of sharps in the top left hand corner of the screen. That's the F, C, G, D, A, E and B. Because there is just one note that is sharpened in G major, we just take the very first note of that order and we can see that it's an F. So in G major, the one note that's sharpened is F, so the F becomes F sharp in the key signature. If we carry on around the sharp side of the clock, D major, because it's the second notch away from C, we look at the first two notes of the sharp order. So F and C become F sharp and C sharp in the key signature. A, three notches away, we use F, C and G, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp in the key signature. E, four notches, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp and D sharp and so on. And it works exactly the same for the flat side of the clock. So for example, F major, which is one notch on the flat side away from the C, so it's got one flat in the key signature. We look at our order of flats, and because it's only got one flat in the key signature, we look at just the very first letter of our order of flats, and we can see that it is a B. So in the key signature of F major, there is one flat, and that is B flat. B flat major, that's two notches away from the C, so that will have two flats in the key signature. That's B flat and E flat and so on around the clock. Now in grades four and five of the Associated Board Music Theory exams, they may ask you to look at key signatures that have six or seven flats or sharps in them. This is where it gets a little bit confusing, so bear with me. Now, if we look at B major, 
We know it's on the sharp side and we can around and we can see that it's got one, two, three, four, five sharps in the key signature. But if we look at G flat, now that at the bottom is another way of saying F sharp. So the exam board will ask you how many sharps or flats and what notes are they that are in the key signature of F sharp major. Now, because it's a sharp key signature, F sharp, we look around the sharp side of the clock and all we do is count round. So G, D, A, E, B, F sharp. And we can see that there are six sharps in the key signature. Similarly, if the exam board asks you for C sharp major, because it's a sharp key signature, we look around counting from the sharp side of the clock and we count around all the way to C sharp and we can see that it's got seven sharps in the key signature. The key thing with enharmonic equivalents is to make sure you understand a note's alternative name. So for example, A sharp is exactly the same as B flat, G sharp is exactly the same as A flat, and so on. So one final key signature to look at is C flat major. Now C flat is the enharmonic equivalent of B, and because it's C flat, we should be looking around the flat side of the clock. We count around all the way around the flat side of the clock until we get to B, and we can rename it C flat if we wanted to, and we count, and we can see that there are seven flats in the key signature of C flat major.